You can fight soldiers, tanks, ships, and jets because you see and hear them. What if you had to deal with an enemy that's often invisible to the naked eye? We're talking about chemical, biological, radiological and explosive or CBRE threats that could hit you without you even knowing it. There's a special group of combat engineers in the SAF who work to neutralize improvised explosive devices or IEDs or to decontaminate hazardous chemical, biological or radiological agents. If and when a CBRE incident occurs, the centre of the incident site is called the hot zone. Beyond the hot zone is the warm zone, followed by the cold zone, which is deemed free from contamination. Working in the hot zone will be our combat engineers from the CBRE units. The Explosive Ordnance Disposal Unit from the 36th Battalion Singapore Combat Engineers specialises in defusing explosive devices, handles security sweeps, as well as the destruction of old war relics in peacetime. In more operational settings, they help clear booby traps or unexploded ordnance in a war zone. IEDs are usually rendered safe from a distance using remote-controlled robots like this wheelbarrow Mark 8. It carries a water disruptor, or what's called a pig stick, which fires a high-velocity jet of water into an explosive device to destroy it. I spoke with Master Sergeant Xie Feng Tie, one of the operators of the Mark 8 wheelbarrow, to find out just how the water disruptor works. Normally what we do is we will have this pig stick. So what does it do is basically the water will be uh, pumped in and also so subsequently we will place our cartridge over and then we will screw the cap on. Okay, once fire, right, the high velocity jet of water will be uh, discharged out from the pig stick itself. It will penetrate the item, the suspected item. It will separate out all the component that is within the items. Ready fire! Inducted. Once the explosive device is rendered safe, it's this guy's job to move in and confirm that it has been destroyed and to collect the scattered parts for forensic examinations. Weighing over 30 kilograms, the armoured bomb suit that 3rd Warrant Officer Alex is wearing is designed to protect him against the force of an explosion and fragments from the exploded device. Even with an armoured bomb suit, neutralising an explosive device with robots is always preferred. So unless it's under extreme conditions, where there are hostages, he won't be cutting wires at the drop of a hat, like what you see in the movies. Uh, there are some similarities, but Hollywood tends to spice up their script. Uh, minimal exposure is one of our principles in operations. So by exposing less personnel to the device, we are ensuring that our people complete our mission safely and successfully. These guys are stripping down in order to suit up. They are from the 39th Battalion Singapore Combat Engineers, the Chemical, Biological and Radiological or CBR unit of the SAF. Snuck in their signature encapsulated suits, they will detect CBR threats and decontaminate an incident site where necessary. 
In this training scenario, the guys are dealing with a chemical threat found in the cargo container. Samples of the source of the threat are collected and identified using the Hazardous Material Identification Device or HAZMAT ID. It analyzes components in solid and liquid chemicals and identifies the harmful agents on the spot. The duo handle the deadly toxin using a clean hand, dirty hand mode of operation. The clean hand will not work with the source at all, but will only pass uncontaminated equipment and apparatus to the dirty hand, who handles the source of the threat directly. This is to minimize cross-contamination by reducing contact with the toxin. The team then uses a decontamination foam unit on the source, as well as a fogger to mitigate the spread of the toxin. You've probably noticed by now that for an emergency, the guys don't seem to be moving that fast. There are good reasons for them to take it slow and steady. In a way, you could say that we are slow because the suit does impede the dexterity a lot, including the very heavy boots and the very, very limited dexterity on the gloves. But we also need to be slow because in a precarious scenario that we are dealing with, we have to be very careful of our each and every step. We must always stay focused. There are constantly a lot of things on our mind that we have to care about. Um, we understand we are operating in a highly hazardous uh, environment, so we have to drill and practice and practice and practice in, uh, in our training scenarios so that individual teams know their own standard operating procedures. This helps them to maintain a very calm and uh, cool composure. Yeah. Because CBRE engineers are expected to be in their suits for extended periods of time, a good part of that drilling and practice goes into getting personnel used to life in their protective gear. Wearing this suit and performing tasks, uh, it really drains our stamina pretty fast. We will do basic uh, actions like climbing of stairs, bending over and kneeling down to condition ourselves to wear this suit for prolonged periods. There is no point in sending a responder into an incident site when, like, with the best equipment when he gets out of breath just after 30 minutes. The training that uh, we do is catered towards tr uh, trying to acclimatise us to get, uh, getting used to movement in a suit when lives are at stake here. It's very important that once you decide to go in, you need to have your mind made up to give you 100% to make the mission a success. We've shown you how they build bridges, clear deadly obstacles, and fight unseen enemies. These are but just some of the important work they do behind the scenes to support Army Maneuver forces. Whatever the mission may be, the men and machines of the Singapore Combat Engineers stand ready to overcome and advance.